Did you know that the American Society for Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition recommends starting tube feeding four hours or less after peg placement? If you didn't, you'll want to stick around to learn all about it. Traditionally, after gastrostomy placement, the initiation of tube feeding has been delayed for 24 hours after the procedure, or at least until the following day. This delay has been applied with the belief that it would be safest for the patient, stemming from a concern for pulmonary aspiration from the postoperative ileus induced by the procedure, but also out of fear that it would increase the risk of peristomal leakage or infection. Even though the application of this practice remains widespread, it runs counter to the available body of literature and recommendations from professional organizations in nutrition and medicine. Evidence from two meta-analyses, the first published by Bechtold et al. in 2008, and the second published by Sarzi et al. in 2011, suggest initiating tube feeding as early as four hours or less after a percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy placement is safe. For example, in the 2011 meta-analysis by Sarzi et al., they found that starting tube feeding less than or equal to 3 hours after the procedure did not result in an overall increased risk of complications compared to starting after 24 hours or the next day. The two groups' rates of vomiting, infection, bleeding, fever, increased gastric residual volume, and death were similar. While the early feeding group did show an increased risk of stomatitis, the delayed feeding group had an increased risk of peristomal leakage. Findings and studies published since then have overwhelmingly confirmed these results. Most of the research is for the percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy, so it doesn't necessarily translate to gastrostomies placed surgically or radiographically, or to a jejunostomy placed using any method. Nevertheless, given the similarities between each feeding tube, there's little reason to suspect the outcomes would differ. Looking at the guidelines and recommendations from professional organizations, I'd like to highlight the American Society for Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition, the European Society for Clinical Nutrition and Metabolism, and the American Society for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy. In the 2017 consensus recommendations titled Aspen Safe Practices for Enteral Nutrition Therapy, the American Society for Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition recommends initiating enteral nutrition four hours or less after peg placement. Then in the 2022 paper titled ESPIN Guideline on Home Enteral Nutrition, the European Society for Clinical Nutrition and Metabolism recommend initiating enteral nutrition within 2-4 to four hours after peg placement. Finally, in the core curriculum series from 2014, the American Society for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy published a paper on enteral feeding that states, feeding via the peg tube can be started safely within 3-4 to four hours of placement. I attempted to locate positions from various other professional organizations, such as the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and the American College of Gastroenterology, but came up empty-handed. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you hit the like button, share it with a friend, and shop for more free and exclusive content by clicking the link down in the video description. Now that we've seen how early feeding after gastrostomy placement is safe and professional organizations recommend it, I want to explore why it's beneficial. Clearly, the longer you unnecessarily withhold tube feeding, the less desirable it is for the patient's nutritional status. Placement of a gastrostomy requires a fasted state, so if tube feeding is held for 24 hours after the procedure, then you're looking at anywhere between 30 and 48 hours without the patient being fed, depending on when the preoperative fast commences. Early feeding can therefore help to preserve and improve nutritional status. We also know that invasive procedures are catabolic, and there's an increased demand for energy and protein to promote healing of the stoma. Early feeding can help to combat this unfavorable change to metabolism while providing substrate for healing. 
Another reason why early feeding after gastrostomy placement may be helpful is that it can reduce length of stay. In many cases, gastrostomy placement occurs near the end of the hospitalization, and discharge can happen as soon as the patient demonstrates tolerance to tube feeding. If you begin feeding a patient within hours of gastrostomy placement, they could realistically demonstrate tolerance to the goal feeding rate on the same day, and be ready for discharge the following morning. But if you delay the initiation of feeding to the next day, then it may be another day or two until the patient is at the goal feeding rate. Every extra day spent in the hospital is undesirable because it increases risk of complications like hospital-acquired infection and increases cost of care by having to provide services that could just as easily be done at home or in a rehab facility. In summary, delaying the initiation of tube feeding in patients with a new gastrostomy is unnecessary if there are no complications with the procedure. Patients can receive tube feeding as early as 2 to 4 hours after the procedure, although it's certainly possible that it's safe to begin feeding even sooner than that. Although the traditional method of initiating tube feeding after gastrostomy placement remains pervasive, I am hopeful that widespread adoption of early feeding is coming. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel.